Hey guys, what's up, Zach? Here today we are here with the next round of the GP3 Championship. Random grids once again, and we get third place on the grid, which is pretty lucky if you tell me, because that means we have a great chance of getting some really solid points here today. A pretty bad start, um, not terrible, but it definitely lost us some time. We've got Amber and Story right up behind us. Christiansen is in second, and Pal Kiss leading at this current time. And a slight bit of frame rate issues here, but we keep it going. A little bit of contact on the exit with Christiansen, but nothing dramatic. It was just a little bit of contact coming out of the corner. Luckily, no damage to either car. And third position at this current time would bag us 15 points. But, you know, it's a, it's a long race. Obviously, four laps around Canada in a Formula 1 car would not take much time whatsoever. But in a GP3 car, it certainly does take its time. A little bit of a uh, mistake there from myself, hitting the curb a little bit harder than I should. I just don't have the right setup here for Canada. I have no idea why I changed the setup to have a bit more speed in a straight line, but it's just absolutely nothing I can do really to make sure this car goes faster in a straight line. Um, but we managed to keep ahead of Amberg's story as well. Palkis leads by about four tenths of a second over Christiansen. And it looks like Amberg's looking for a move going into the hairpin, looking at the wheel on the inside. Is that the wheel you know, not you know coming off the ground? I'm not really too sure, but the wheel was not spinning as we went around that hairpin there. So that, if that's a problem with the car, or maybe it's just the wheel um, going up as we go through the corner, I'm not too sure. But down the big straight, Hamburg is definitely closing in. He's looking for the move down the inside. My teammate Hamburg has got the maneuver done into the last chicane, and he's on two wheels. There's a bit of contact, and we're on two wheels. We're all over the place. And looks like Story's going to get through. Will Quay Pops get through as well? Because I had absolutely no speed coming out the corner there. Amberg was on two wheels, then I went on two wheels. So both of the eight or two of the three ATEC cars going on two wheels is not good whatsoever. And now trying to get past Story, getting a little bit sort of bottled up behind him there as he's going incredibly slowly. Amberg going quite slowly as well. We get around Story and now up into P4. Tamas Palkis has lost the lead by the looks of it to Michael, I think it's Michael Christiansen, we'll just say Christiansen, um, Amberg is definitely defending, oh he's diving it down the inside, there's a bit of um, action on the grass there, then breaking late, we lose our front wing on the back of Zoll Amberg, and we're off the track, this is only a sprint race, I suppose only four laps, so can we make it to the end without a front wing? Who knows what's going to happen here, but there's no point pitting. That will definitely mean we don't get any points. The only way we have any chance of getting anywhere is to just stay out. And obviously without a front wing, you've got absolutely no grip. So a bit cheeky there, just powering it across the uh, chicane there. I did sort of obviously lose time at the start of it, but I did, you know, I could have lost way more time if I'd just got onto the track straight away. But breaking incredibly early going into the hairpin, as I know, without a front wing now, I've got absolutely no grip. Obviously, our factor one hasn't got the most realistic damage in the world, but obviously, when you lose your front wing, it still really means that there's a detrimental effect to the aerodynamics. Palkis is in second, Christiansen leading. There's about three seconds between Palkis in second and Story in third, and myself in fourth. I'm going incredibly slowly through the, the final chicane. I want to make sure I don't make any contact with the uh, the wall of champions, if you will, and uh, don't want to lose any wheels on that. It would be very easy to smash a wheel off or something. Uh, so we've got Stockinger and Quay Fobbs behind us here. Locking up into turn one, obviously, absolutely no grip and going lock to lock, but just haven't got that grip, so I've just got to really just hope that the car gets around the corner and my other ATEC teammate there is uh, Marlon Stockinger he's right behind us here, he's in P5 there's actually about a two second gap back to Zoll Lamberg there so I'm not too sure what's happened to him and it's a bit of a mistake for myself there I think uh, Stockinger made a little bit of contact and we have absolutely no grip through the fast um, fast corner there which meant we were just off the track onto the grass straight away and as I said if we'd came to the pits we would have definitely not got any points and this was the only realistic way we could get anything from this race. It's a very risky strategy, but if you want your front wing to fall off anywhere, it's pretty good to have it round Montreal, as it is quite a lot of straight and not a huge amount of fast corners, which you obviously need the aerodynamics for. So Lambert caught right up to the back of me, obviously. I've got absolutely no speed. And then going into the hairpin, absolutely no grip, locking it up. Full lock now. I was going to try and get it back onto the course. A little bit cheeky. I just power it straight back onto the circuit. But no drama. There's two and a bit seconds behind us. Two Quay Pops and now it's Dean, uh, Dean Smith, I think it is, who has uh, got up into eighth place. But actually, without a front wing in a straight line, we've got little downfall. So going 
down the straights we've got absolutely no problems but we completely messed that up and obviously as we cut the chicane there we have to ease off a tad and just let two cars through you know moving over to let Williamson through and obviously you know I cut the, the chicane corner so I had to let that back and a very risky move down the inside of Williamson and an even more risky move down the inside of Amberg that doesn't come off but Amberg slow on the exit even without a front wing I managed to keep up with Zoll Amberg through the corner there now can I keep up with him through the the fast right then left I've got around the outside it's a bit of contact with Zoll Amberg not luckily enough contact to make sure that I don't spin but that was enough contact to actually lose me a bit of time holds Zoll Lamberg and there's a bit of contact there is contact I've gone in way too deep I had no downforce the brakes were gone and I'm off the track now once again I hit my teammate Zoll Lamberg from P5 he was at that time and now he's dropped down the order and Williamson looking at the inside and he's probably going to get the move done no he doesn't I break incredibly late running a bit on the outside Williamson make contact there's absolutely great racing here and we are only at 2.3 seconds away from P4. They've definitely slowed up more contact between Williamson. Williamson's got down the inside, but I look for the, the cutback, and I do the switchback even, and I get the move done. Williamson loses a huge amount of time. He's going to be dropping down all the positions. He might even be outside the top eight come the end of this straight, as he's got absolutely no straight line speed because he was so bad going into the corner. And look at that, Smith has got into seventh place there. And he might even get overtaken once again. I'm just defending all over the place. I realised I'd made a mistake hitting Amberg. And Dean Smith looks down the inside. It's a bit of contact. They're going to go side by side at the start finish line. We managed to squeeze him out into the wall of champions. Up to the start finish line. Are we going to do it? We get ahead of Smith. And we're going to finish P5. Our best result of the season. What a crazy race. I really enjoyed that race as you can see there. And I'm just going to quickly run through the points. I don't really have time to uh, do the whole table and everything. So, um... A great race, managed to come through the field once again after messing it up. So, wow, what a great race. Christiansen gets the win, and that's his first points of the season. And uh, then in second place for that race was obviously Powell Kiss, and then in third place in that race was Stockinger. Now, the points at the moment, I'm just going to no note a couple of key people. Um, Powell Kiss currently on 36 points, um, Christiansen obviously on 25, Bachetta's on 26. Uh, Stockinger is on 25, as is Daly. Um, obviously, Christiansen stories got, got quite a few points. And as for us, we are currently on 17 points, so definitely something to improve on. The next round is the Spanish Grand Prix. I'll see you there, and I'll try and get a points table done for that one. It's just I couldn't actually get... I didn't actually... For, well, I forgot to record the uh, results screen for that, but I did write down all the results, luckily. But, um, yeah, I'll see you in the next episode, guys. Thanks for tuning in. It's been Axiom out here. Goodbye.